We have heard many times the importance of remembering our death. We hear so many things about the remembrance of our death. But let me remind myself and one and all about the ayah of the Quran, which are the most beautiful words, the best of words, the words of Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, Minha khalaqnakum that we have created you from it. وَفِيهَا نُعِيدُكُمْ And we will return you to it. Let us ponder on this for a moment. We are sitting here today, we are sitting in the comforts of this world. Our, last, our next breath could be our last breath. This comfortable and friendly environment that we are in, this could be our last moment in this kind of environment. And so beautifully, the Prophet, our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, tells us when we go into our graves, we will have a friendly environment there. Wallahi, if our deeds are good, then it will be the best of places. But if our, if our deeds are not good, if we have disobeyed Allah azza wa jal in this life, then wallahi, it is one of the worst places, and the only thing worse than that is the Jahannam. When a person passes away and the soul is taken out, the angels come to take the soul of the believer. And then what happens if the person is good? Then that soul is wrapped in a beautiful cloth. It is wrapped in a cloth which is made from good smelling musk and it is taken up to the heavens. And if it is a bad person, then that angel comes from a sack from the hellfire. He comes and he wraps that wretched soul and tries to pull it out. Because the soul of the believer, it comes out like drops of water. It is happy to come out. But the soul of the disbeliever, our Prophet Muhammad wasallam explains it thus. It is like a three-pronged object latching onto a wet piece of wool and you know how you try to pull that it is very difficult our prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says that the wretched soul is so reluctant to come out of the person's body because it does not want to meet its lord it has not prepared for the akhirah it is not prepared for the grave it knows that its abode is not jannah it knows that the desires are finished here and then we go into reality. Today, inshallah, I wish to talk about what happens to the disbelieving soul first, the bad soul first. And then inshallah, I wish to go on and talk about, give inshallah a full description of what happens to the believing soul and what happens in the grave. So what happens to the disbelieving person? The angel comes. The soul is reluctant to come out. And the angel of death forcefully snatches that soul out of the person's body and wraps it in that cloth, that sack that comes from hell, takes it up towards the heavens. And this soul leaves off a stench and a stink. And when the Malakul Maut comes to the first heaven and says that I want to pass through, then the question is asked, whose wretched soul is this? The Malakul Maut answers, this is so-and-so, he used to do so-and-so. Then those who are the gatekeepers of the first heaven, they say that he's not welcome here. And this soul thrown back down, Allah Azza wa Jal does not allow this soul to come up and pass through the seven heavens. This soul is thrown back into the body of the disbeliever and the evil person. And this happens before the burial. When the soul comes back into the person's body, his fac faculties are restored. The person can now answer, the person can now see, the person can now hear. But again, we have to remember that this hearing and this seeing is not connected to this world. It is a different journey. Then the questioning begins. 
And this happens just after the burial, when the people are still standing around the person's grave. And when the people around are making dua, when the people have finished asking Allah Azza wa Jal for forgiveness and to give that person steadfastness in the grave, then the person in the grave will hear the footsteps of the people leaving. And then the questioning starts. The person is, you know, sat up in his grave. The questions that are asked in this examination are all known to us. Although we know the answers that we are supposed to give in the grave, but if our life wasn't according to the deen of Islam, if our life wasn't in obeying Allah Azza wa Jal throughout our life, then we will not be able to answer that question. And that disbeliever, when he goes into the grave and those questions are asked to him, the name of those angels are Munkar and Nakir. They will sit that person up in the grave and they will ask him, what did you used to say about this person? And they are referring to the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But that person who did not follow the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that person will say that the people used to say such and such about him. Then those angels will reply that you are a liar. And according to other narrations, the Munkar and Nakir will come to that disbelieving soul and ask the question, who is your Lord? Ha ha la adri. I don't know. The next question will be asked, what is your religion? The disbelieving person will be unable to answer because he did not live his life according to Islam. The next question will be asked, who is your prophet? <laughs> May Allah Azza wa Jal save us from this, from this fate. Then when this person has been asked all these questions and he's not able to give the replies because he did not live this life according to the way shown to us by Allah Azza wa Jal through his book and according to the sunnah of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and one of the things mentioned by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the pressing in of the grave. Now this pressing in of the grave, everyone will have to experience this. And if someone were to be saved of this, then it would be Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh radiallahu anhu. And, but the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that even he will experience this. But of course, the pressing in of the grave will be done to each individual, but then they will be released if, of course, they were believers and if their deeds were righteous. And the disbelieving person, once he has answered those questions incorrectly, a hole will be opened and he will be made to see through it. And he will be shown paradise. The angel will say, see what you have missed out on. You missed out on these luxuries. You missed out on this beautiful life that Allah Azza wa Jalla has prepared for those people who believe. And then that person will be shown Jahannam after this, through that hole. And the angel will say, this is where you will be. This is your abode. And then the angels will open a gate from the door of Jahannam. It is not a fairy tale. This will happen in reality to the person who will disbelieve and those who will not be doing righteous actions in this life. And our beloved Khalifa, Uthman radiallahu anhu, he used to cry. And his wife, who was the daughter of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, would ask him that when hellfire and the paradise are mentioned, I mean, you cry, but you don't cry as much as when you hear about the grave. And Uthman radiallahu anhu gave the reply that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that this is the first stage after a person's death. If a person passes this first stage, the stage of the grave, then there is no worries after that. Everyone wants success. But what is the real success? The real success is not the success of this, of this life. It's not having a big mansion or a lot of money. But success. That whoever obeys Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, indeed he has succeeded. He has got the biggest success. And this is just the start for the disbeliever. It is just the start. I bet you that every single person in this room that passed away in their childhood or passed away when they were young, and then do we still doubt that death can come to us at any time? Wallahi, it is because of the deception of this world. The world has captured our hearts. And that is why we are so far away from our deen. That is why we don't think about the akhirah. That is why we don't think about the grave. 
It seems as though it will come later on. We will deal with it when it, when it comes. At the moment, I've got other problems. Our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam instructed us, think a lot about death. Keep on thinking about it. Cry to Allah Azza wa Jal, Oh Allah, forgive me. But when we go into the grave, then we will regret. I wish I had done this. I wish I had done that. But wallahi, it will be too late. Now let us look at the believer. When the angel of death comes to the believing person, comes and wraps the soul in a beautiful, nice smelling cloth, a perfumed cloth, and it is taken up. Who is this nice smelling person? Whose soul is this? The, the angel of death will say, this is so and so. He will be given glad tidings and he will be made to enter the first heaven. Then it, the same thing will happen at each heaven until he will be taken to Allah Azza wa Jal. And then Allah Azza wa Jal will command that his book be put in the Illiyeen. The Illiyeen are those who are close to Allah Azza wa Jal. Those who are high, who have a high rank in the eyes of Allah Azza wa Jal. And then his soul will be sent back to his body. And this is of course when the people are still, are still standing around the grave. The person will be sat up in the grave. And the person will be asked, what did you used to say about this person? Meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And of course this person will say that he was the Prophet of Allah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasooluh. Then the angel of death will say, I knew you would say this. And according to other narrations, Munkar and Nakir will come and they will ask that person, Who is your Lord? My Lord is Allah Azza wa Jal. And then he will be asked, What is your religion? And he will say, Dini al Islam. And then it will be asked of him, Who is your Nabi? Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then that person will be shown through a hole. He will be shown hellfire and he will see it and he will be terrified. And the angel will say that this is what Allah Azza wa has saved you from. And then he will be shown the ni'am, the bounties of paradise. And then the angel will say that this is what Allah Azza wa has prepared for you. You were steadfast in this world and he will be shown the doors, the doors of paradise. And that person will say, I want to enter it. And Munkar and Nakir will say, the time will come. And he'll be longing for that Jannah. And the disbelieving person, when he sees that hellfire, he will say, I wish the hour never comes. And the believing person will say, I wish the day of judgment will come straight away. But for this, my dear respected brothers, elders and sisters in Islam, we have to struggle in this life. We have to struggle the way that our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam struggled. We have to struggle the way that our, sah our Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in struggled. If we pass this test, then we have got the greatest success. And I will finish off inshallah with an ayah of the Quran. Allah Azza wa Jal says, O oh, you who believe, have the consciousness of Allah Azza wa Jal in your hearts. And every person should see what it has prepared for their tomorrow. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين من كل ذنب فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم